Okay, today we're going to be looking at Ardor. I haven't looked at Ardor in a while, and we're going to be trying to answer a viewer's question, which is using a MIDI controller, uh, either a device uh, that just has sliders and knobs on it, or in some cases, like in my case, uh, I have a keyboard that has sliders and knobs on it that I can control aspects of different MIDI programs on my computer with. And we're going to connect these different uh, sliders and knobs to different aspects, volume and panning and effects within Ardor. So first things first, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, Jack running. I've opened up Jack Control here. Next, I'm going to open up Ardor. And I'm going to create a new project. Uh, I'm just going to create it inside a temp folder. Uh, just because this isn't a project I'm going to be keeping. I'll just call it um, MIDI, whatever, for a project name. Create new. Now, um, if I come up here to my options window and I go to control surfaces and I click generic MIDI, I can now control click on, I'm sorry, control center click on something like this volume control here. And you get this little operator controller, operate controller now. Now, this can be a little glitchy. If, if that window doesn't pop up, try it a few more times. And once you get it going, it gets going. But sometimes I have to click on it a few times before it takes effect. Now, if I move this knob, nothing's going to happen because we haven't connected my MIDI device to Ardor. So let's go back to Jack Control here. Click on this Connect button. And under this ALSA tab, I'm going to choose um, USB Oxygen 61. That's the name of my keyboard. You would pick your MIDI device. And I'm going to choose Ardor and I'm going to click Connect. Now, if you watch up here, if I control click control, control center click again and I get that operator control operate control now, I can now slide this knob and as you can see, it has now locked this slider into that master volume control there. If I add another um, track here, I can once again control center click and move the next slider and that will control that. Um, let me add a mono track here and I'll do the same thing, control center click. And of course you can do the same thing with things like uh, these knobs over here. So this knob can control that slider. You can also link more than one. So if I was to add in another track and I can control center click that and move that same knob. Now those two uh, tracks are controlled by the same knob. So I got the knob controlling that. I can also control master volume with this slider and I can control the uh, first track with this slider here. If I open up my uh, mixer by hitting Alt M, uh, I can also do the same thing for left and right channels for panning. Uh, so I can control click here. You get that same little uh, uh, window there. Now I can move this, this knob here. I was going for the first one, but I grabbed the wrong one. But have that. If you do turn the wrong one, I can always control click again and move a different one and it will reassign it so that knob now controls it. This one does not any longer. If you have a stereo track, you can control click like so and I'll move this knob here. And as you can see, that's controlling just the left channel's uh, control. So um, uh, what you can do is you can set uh, that same knob to this controller here by clicking and then clicking on the, uh, the same knob or turning the same knob. So now they're both controlled together or it could be even simpler. You can have them as separate knobs if you want to control them individually. But at the same time, let's say I control click this one, control center click, and I turn this knob here. All I have to do is click link here and that will control link the two. So as you can see, they're being controlled together. Now, obviously, as I said earlier, you can control the same thing as far as track effects. If you were to add uh, track effects, you know, different effects, echoes or whatever effects you add, you can control uh, those sliders and knobs uh, the same way uh, just by right clicking on them. Now, also, if you're going to use this project again with those uh, settings, you can hit um, auto rebind controller. So when you save this project, next time you open it, it will automatically try to connect to your MIDI device. I'm going to open up a... Um, project I already have, so open recent. I'm going to open up this loops and I'm not going to save the one I just created. Uh, just close. So here we go. Uh, it gives you this little error saying that it's not able to um, connect generic MIDI control controllable 
uh, not found in this session. Uh, what I believe that is, because it still works even if you got this error, is possibly uh, controlling back out, because some some many devices, mine's not, the more expensive ones, if once you link them, if I control this volume control here, the knob will physically move on the device as well. Those, those are a little bit more expensive than what I have set up here. And I think that that might be what it's saying, is that it's not able to connect back out to the device. Regardless of that error message, things still work if I move this slider, this slider, this slider, or any of these first five sliders that I've linked to the um, volume controls of those tracks, um, they work. Um, once again, this can be a little glitchy sometimes. It, even if you have saved that project to auto reconnect, if your last time you used it, if you had unchecked um, the, the generic MIDI controller surface here, um, you may have to reconnect that and then reopen the project. It is a little glitchy in that way. Um, but once you play with it a bit, you, you get to understand uh, what to do and what not to do to, to cause or prevent those, those little glitches. Um, so basically, if you have a project where you've connected them, you've clicked auto rebind and you've saved it later on, you open it and you don't have MIDI connection, check and double check and make sure that you have generic MIDI checked and then reopen that project should fix that. And of course, always make sure that you're connected within Jack, your MIDI device to that device because uh, you may switch out devices or the device may not be available, whatever, depending on your situation. So now I can click this little play loop and it's gonna play this, this little loop here and you don't hear anything because I have um, all the sliders down, but if I start moving them up. And that is how you do a live mix with uh, your MIDI controllers in Ardor. Uh, once again, uh, it can be a little glitchy uh, originally getting them linked up, but normally once you get them linked up, uh, it works pretty well. So um, just wanted to show you how to do that. I thank the viewer for asking. Uh, I ask that you visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. You've got plenty of tutorials over there. Uh, also visit the links in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.